Now, there are many of you who have experienced extreme financial pain because of the crisis we find ourselves in. Because of this economic recession, maybe you've lost one income in your household. Maybe you've lost all income in your household. And almost every night, you are laying awake saying, how on earth are we going to be able to pay the bills? This morning, I want to give you hope. I want you to know that God will supply your needs. Now, your needs are not that 52-inch TV. Your needs are food, water, and shelter. And if you're here this morning as brothers and sisters in Christ, not only do we need to be praying for you, but we need to be caring for you. Amen? Amen. I want us to look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. These are words of hope. This is what it says. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, I will never leave you. Never will I forsake you. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. You've lost your job. God's not going to leave you. You can't pay your bills. God is not going to forsake you. You are at the end of your rope. Our God will provide. Amen? Amen. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. God is challenging us no matter what our life circumstance. We are to be content with what we have. Okay, so we've stopped spending money on things we don't need, and we're starting to be content with what we have. If we are able to curb our financial appetites, we actually have the freedom to save money. The freedom to save money. Now, some of you are saying saving does not feel like freedom. It feels like bondage. I don't like to save my money. Well, the truth is, if you save your money, you are free. Free from financial worry. Free from lying awake at night wondering how you're going to pay your bills. Free to use your resources for God's kingdom purposes. What do I mean? When you save money, you are free. Now, it's not easy to save money. You have to have a plan, and a plan that works. Remember, I had a plan to save money for a couch, and that plan did not work, right? You have to have a plan that works. You know, a lot of times my husband and I will have a plan to save money, and we'll say, okay, we have this extra money at the end of everything else, and we're going to save that, but we'll just let it sit in our bank account. And what happens? At the end of the month, that extra money just disappears. It's like magic. It's just gone, right? But if you actually plan on saving money and you have an actual plan that you do to save it, it's amazing. Your life has changed. Remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about a 10-10-80 plan? Give 10% of your money to God, get, save 10% for yourself, and live on the remainder of the 80 you see, once you've given your money to God, then you're free to save money. And when you save money, you save it. You put it somewhere so it can be saved, whether that's in a savings account, whether that's in a money market account, whatever it is, that money needs to get out of your checking account. Why? Because if it stays there, you're going to what? Spend it. Right. Get that money out of your account. Okay, so some of you are saying 10%. I can't even begin thinking about saving 10%. Well, save 1%. Start with one. Let's say you make $500 a week. 1% of that is $5. Every week you save $5. Let's say you get really excited about your savings plan and you, you move that up to $10 and then you move that up to $25 and before you know it, you're saving 10% at $50 a week. And all of a sudden you've saved $1,000. It's what Dave's, Dave Ramsey would call an emergency fund, right? You've got $1,000 in your emergency fund, okay? So there you are with $1,000 in your emergency fund. And guess what happens? An emergency. Your kid gets sick and you've got to go to the emergency room, right? And all of a sudden, be, whereas before you would be freaking out because you've got to pay your $500 deductible, you're not freaking out anymore. Why? Because you've got $1,000 in your savings account. Well, maybe the car breaks down and you have a $250 repair bill. Are you freaking out? 
No, why? Because you have $1,000 and an emergency fund, right? Whereas before, when you were living paycheck to paycheck, every time an emergency happened, right? Every time life happened, all of a sudden, you're freaking out. But now, because you're saving your money, you're able to have the freedom that comes with saving. You're free from worry. Does that make sense to everyone? Amen? Amen. God is wanting us to be financially free. God is challenging us to save everything we possibly can save. This week I talked with Christine Johns about how she and her husband Mike have done everything in their power to save all they can. I want us to watch this video. Hi, I'm Christine John, and my husband Mike and I have been married for 20 years. We have been, we have two little girls, Megan, age seven in the second grade, and Robin, age five in kindergarten. And we have been coming to this church for seven years, and we've been members for seven years. When we came to the church, we brought financial peace with us, and um, we offered financial peace to the, to the church and led classes in that for about four years. When Mike and I got married um, 20 years ago, we started with absolutely nothing. We were married right out of college, and we, so we had our college educations, but we had no money whatsoever, and we had no help from our family at all. So all the, the wealth that we have built, we have built um, from our income and from saving for 20 years. Um, getting out of debt has allowed us to use the biggest wealth building tool that we have, which is our income. Because our, we're not sending any payments to the bank, we have all of our income to use for our wealth building other than normal monthly expenses. Um, another way that has changed our life is that um, when, when our children came along, we had the freedom that, that I could either stop working, but what I actually did was change to part-time. But because um, we had saved money and didn't have any debt payments, I was able to, to stop working and just work part-time. The way that we save money is, is the first thing that we do is we give a tithe. That, that just comes off the top of everything. Then after that, the next thing we do is we save money. And the way that we save money is by having it be done automatically. It automatically is, comes out of our bank accounts right when um, our paychecks are deposited. So we don't never have to think about saving money. It's just done automatically. Again, I would mention the, the the fact that your biggest wealth building tool is your income. And if you're giving your income to the bank, then you're not going to be able to save money. If you save your money, you have, your, you have choices on everything. You have the freedom to choose. You also have a great, you do not experience any stress because you have the cushion there when you need it and you know that you're building something for the future. So save all you can. Did you hear that? You have the freedom to choose. I mean, you have freedom from stress. No longer do you have this weight of financial worry. When you save money, God gives you freedom. Freedom that keeps you from harming yourself and your family financially. Saving is not easy. It takes discipline. When we save, we say, I'm not going to get that, that thing that I want right now. I'm going to put off gratification. Now, the truth is, like we said, we live in a culture where gratification is instant. And so every single day of our lives, we've got to say, no, I'm saving this. I'm saving this for my freedom. I'm saving this for... For my future, I'm saving this so that I can be and I can do what God wants me to do. Three simple rules written 250 years ago, but I believe 
just as important for us today. Earn all you can. Save all you can. And next week, we're going to talk about what it means to give all we can. Now, some of you may have received one of these in the mail. It's a pledge card. Now, I believe in this church, we need to be brutally honest about our finances, about what we are doing and what we are asking you to do. Do you realize that information is power? If you have the right information, you're able to make all the decisions that God is calling you to make. And so I want you to know if you've received one of these in the mail or if you've received one when you came in this morning, next Sunday is our Pledge Sunday. It's the day that we will gather these cards. And this is when we're asking you to participate in what we call first mile giving. Giving of our first fruits, giving of our tithes and our offerings. For some of us, it will be 10% of our income. For others, maybe it will be one, two, five, seven percent For still others, maybe you're saying, there is no way that I can pledge anything to the church. Just know that when you see this, and if you cannot give anything to the church, I want you to put your name on it so that we can be praying for you as brothers and sisters in Christ, lifting you up in the financial crisis that you're in. Now, there are some of you who are second mile givers. Now, second mile is giving beyond what first mile giving is. Now, there are some of you who are giving second mile in a particular way. Many of you three years ago pledged to give to a capital campaign, a building campaign right for the space that we are in. Now, that obligation will end in May, and in May we will have a second capital campaign. Remember I said information is power? You need to know what you're pledging to. That is a separate campaign. This is first mile giving, offering your first fruits to God. So I want you to take this card home, and I want you to pray over it. And I want you to ask God, Lord, what are you wanting me to give? How are you wanting me to give to the mission and ministry right here at Shiloh Church. Next week, we're going to be collecting these, so I challenge you to pray. Three simple rules. Earn all you can, save all you can, and next week we're going to have the opportunity to give all we can. Church, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, We are walking into one of the most interesting times of the year, the Christmas season, a season in which we celebrate your birth, and yet at the same time, a season in which we are tempted to spend beyond our means. God, I pray that you walk with each and every one of us so that we will be faithful with the way in which we spend our money. So that we can can say no to the things that you are calling us to say no to. So that we can be content with what we have. Lord God, I know we have people right here in our midst who are struggling because they've lost jobs. Who are struggling because they can't make their ends meet. So God, as brothers and sisters in Christ, help us to care for one another. Help us to hold each other up. Help us to be a blessing to one another because you are such a blessing to us. Lord God, anoint us for your kingdom purposes. For we pray this, we claim this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Let us stand for our closing.